Hi, Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe here. Today we're taking a look at a new feature in the Cura software from Ultimaker, which is called Adaptive Layers. And this feature is a nice way of improving your print time while not sacrificing print quality. So, for example, if I wanted to print this chess piece here, I'd want it to have a nice surface finish with nice smooth curves where you can't see the layering uh, really visibly. So ordinarily I would do that by picking a fairly small layer height, say something around 100 microns, maybe even something a little thinner. But as you're probably aware, the biggest factor in determining how long a print takes is the layer height. So the thinner the layers, the longer the print takes. So if I set this up at 100 microns, which is pretty good quality print, I could certainly go thinner, but uh, I usually stay around 100 microns. If I go ahead and slice this file using 100 microns, as you can see down here, it's going to take about 2 hours and 13 minutes to print. Now, if I turn on the adaptive layering option, you'll see that that print time gets reduced. So you'll find the setting under the experimental category. You have to be in the advanced mode. Uh, so over here on the right side, you have buttons for recommended or custom. You need to be on custom, and then you get access to all these advanced settings. Now the setting won't show up by default. You have to enable that in preferences. So if you go into the preferences screen, and go to the settings area, you'll find all these advanced settings that you can turn on that are hidden by default. And the easiest way to find it is to just use the search box here. You can type in adaptive and you'll see that there are four settings related to adaptive layers and I've got them all enabled here. So you can just check the box to turn them on in the interface then click on close and then you'll find them over here under the experimental category. So if we check the option for adaptive layers, it'll then show those other options if you checked them in the preferences. And you can fine tune the way this works over there. So I've adjusted some of these settings. This first setting is the maximum variation from your default. So my default in this case is 0.1 millimeters. This is how much it can vary from that setting up or down in the adaptive settings. So I've, I've changed it from the default. The default is 0.1. I, I changed it to 0.15 to let it vary even more than the default would allow. The next setting is adaptive layers variation step size. So this is the difference in height of each layer compared to the previous layer. And I've got it set for 0 0.01, meaning it's going to be able to make changes in very fine uh, increments. And then the final setting is adaptive layers threshold. Uh, the default is a value of 200 here, and it's a, a bit of an odd setting because it relates, as it says in the description here, it relates to the tan, or the tangent of the steepest slope in a layer. So, um, you know, the, the easiest way to think about it is that if you lower this value from the default of 200, it's going to have more of a tendency to go towards thinner layers, whereas if you have a higher value for the setting, it's it's going to tend towards thicker layers. So I've reduced it from the default of 200 down to a value of 100 so that it's going to use uh, thinner layers more often resulting in a higher quality object overall uh, at the cost of a, a bit of speed. But what you'll see is after it slices with these settings it shows the estimate down here now of 1 hour 33 minutes. So we have shaved about 45 minutes off of our print time and you can see the results of this if you change your preview from solid view to layer view and then the color scheme it defaults to the material color we're going to change that to layer thickness and now it's going to give us a sliding color scale to show the layer thickness where a dark blue is the thinnest and then as it moves up into the greens and then up into the yellows it's showing thicker and thicker layers so now you can see in our preview and I'll zoom in that it's using thicker layers in the yellow portions. So in the areas where there's not much variance in the object geometry, where it's kind of going straight up like at the base, it's using thick layers closer to 0.27 millimeters. Same thing around this curved area here uh, where it's, it's a slight curve, it's using thicker layers because those layers won't be very visible. But as that curve increases and there's more of an inward slope, it goes to thinner and thinner layers as evidenced by the greens and then the blue colors here. That means that it's using very, very thin layers there so that that'll have a nice smooth curved surface and 
when you combine all of this, when you combine these thicker layers with the thinner layers, it results in a very high quality object, but printed a lot more quickly than if you just used one setting, as would be the default approach. So again, our original print job was 2 hours and 13 minutes. Now we're looking at 1 hour and 33 minutes. So about a 45 minute savings for what's still going to produce a really nice high quality object. So it's a great feature, worth exploring. The usefulness of this setting is going to vary depending upon the specific geometry you're using it for. So if you're printing objects that have a whole lot of variances in the geometries and a whole lot of detail, it's going to tend towards using thinner layers throughout and the time savings won't be as great. Whereas if it's an object that has certain sections like this here in the middle where there's not a lot of curvature going on and the layers won't be visible, uh, that's where you'll see the greatest benefit of this setting because it can use thicker layers in those areas while still maintaining a high overall quality. And here we have the final prints. On the left is the one that was set to a 100 micron layer height throughout. That took 2 hours and 13 minutes to print. And on the right is the one using adaptive layers. That took 1 hour and 33 minutes to print. So play around with it. Uh, as you can see, it's still listed as an experimental feature, which means Ultimaker is still working on it. They'll still make improvements to it as Cura gets updated. But uh, I found it to be a very useful feature, and uh, I recommend that you give it a try. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.